Uh, yeah, this is uh, Mitch Watson. You'll know my voice is much more deeper and pronounced than Glenn's. Very round. More, more trained. Round. I more trained. Yeah, I draw funny books. <laughs> so we're kind of on the uh, we're kind of on the end of the of the cycle for you guys. So yeah. is is there anything that you haven't been asked yet? I, I mean, go go ahead and ask. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. We've, you know, we'll just keep repeating the same stuff over and over again, but make it sound like it's French. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> really, all I think all we've seen from Beware the Batman so far are just a couple of those images, uh, and it certainly looks like a like, and it's certainly a departure from Brave and the Bold. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the direction that you want to take the show into? Visually or uh, visually story and, and story-wise, but um, yeah, I mean, it, there's three main uh, differences to the show. I'll do the visual. You do, you do the, the visual. Okay, the I'll do the, this. I'll do the other one, and then Glenn will take care of the visual one. I mean, uh, so the first thing is we decided to with the Batman character and the Batman universe to go backward into. The, its original origins, which is when he was more of a detective, you know, a real detective. So the show be, is pretty much a procedural on, on one level, because it's, yes, he has the Batmobile, he has the suit, and he has the gear and all that stuff, but he's also, at his core, a guy looking at the clues and solving mysteries, and he has this incredible brain and this ability to do that. So that's one big change that we, we did. This, the other, and the other bigger change, the second one is the fact that there's no villains that you've seen before animated. There will be no Joker, no Penguin, no Riddler, none of those guys. It's all the villains are uh, taken from the either past or present comic books, and some of them are pulled whole cloth, and some of them are completely revised. Um, and we just really kept the name. And DC has been like right on board and consulted and they've been great with the whole thing and they've been really excited because we're taking characters some of which who never really gotten to shine and we're only using maybe a couple of comic books um, and really give them a story and, and pull them into this world. And then the third difference, or third thing Visually in CG it, it's, that's been the biggest thing visually I mean that we're doing with a character that hasn't been done before and um, I, I still want it to be very stylized, I don't Want it to just look like, you know, photorealistic. Yeah, but, cut scenes from a video game. Yeah, um, but we have to kind of build everything. It's we have to build the city. We have to build everything, and then we kind of film it. I mean, that's the thing that the that the process is different. Uh, with two D, we had kind of more control. You could just draw exactly what you want to see. Now with CG, you have to build it and then film it and then light it. And um, um, there are things that um, you couldn't do like a few years ago that like we're able to do now and get results that I think are are pretty amazing. I mean, just the lighting alone, I think, is going to add a. a kind of a level of realism or give it a cinematic quality then yeah the, I mean you can just see you can move the camera yeah. in completely different ways and and you know do stuff you know in 2D you're limited to how many fields sometimes you can push in and that kind of thing in, in CG you're not I mean you can you can stick a camera in the sky and have it come plummeting straight down into the city and zoom through the subway systems and up and the way these guys have constructed the, the city itself I mean they're 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 still building it they're I mean they're building Gotham City it's not just a couple of sets it's, we it's have to city. make things work I yeah. mean batarangs when they flip open I mean we can cheat it but Things are working. Yeah, when, when they yeah. did the, the Glenn redesigned the, uh, the the Batman's utility belt, and they to make it work to figure it out, Glenn he and his team literally built it out of cardboard, and we're walking around the offices with it on, going, I don't know, you know, is it we need to be able to pull this thing off and stuff like that, and they, it, it, but because of that, you guys were able to actually, yeah. you know, then recreate it in CG, and it works, you know, it's it that it, because it's a new version of the belt, it, it functions functions in a different way, and it's actually worked. I mean, if you really built it, it would work. So, sort of. Sort of. Like, but pretty close. Pretty Didn't you kind of lose the charm of Batman reaching into his, pulling out his bat bulletproof shield that's eight times bigger than the belt? And, uh, We're still uh, doing that. We, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you, it's, I'm yeah, not it's, saying it's we're... Bat we're, snuggy. We're, I mean, they, <laughs> they cheat things in movies all the time, yeah. but I think... 
Yeah. You know, or it, it's going to add something that you, you've never seen. Or yeah, we're not. But I mean, in terms of the silly things, and, and DC has been they they will get on us whenever we do we've done something in the show where they're like, that feels a little confusing, you know. So it's, we have we go back and rejigger it. So it's you know we're trying to approach it from as in that aspect as realistic as possible. I mean, the character, the Batman, uh, Alfred Quintana, those guys are played much more realistic. They say the villains, the villains is where we're, we really allow ourselves to sort of go over the top. So. Well, well, one of the things we talk about is, you know, it's a guy swinging with a cape over the city, but he doesn't have any superpowers. So it needed to be realistic enough that you felt like, well, if he falls, he can get hurt. So that's kind of where the... It, it's a little bit more realistic looking or, or more detail oriented than say Green Lantern, you know. So it's it's important to the to make Batman feel believable. I mean, he gets hurt. I mean, yeah. we have him get hurt. He's not impervious, you know. He's not. He gets his butt kicked. I mean, not, well, he gets hurt. He, there's yeah. several episodes where he gets his, he really gets damaged. But you you have to believe that. I mean, the Batmobile coming around the corner if it doesn't have a certain amount of weight to it. Mm-hmm. It won't feel like a car. So I think maybe those are some of the challenges that we're dealing with that, um, say, Green Lantern didn't have to deal with. Um, but I, I think the kinds of stories we're, we're doing, he's chasing people around the city in that environment. All of that stuff has to yeah. feel believable. And, and none of this, I mean, I don't think we're doing a single, the stories don't revolve around somebody robbing a bank or, you know, or, you know, blowing a hole in a jewelry store or something like that. It's usually all of them, because of we have these new characters, new villains to play with, all of them have, they're, they're different things. They're what these particular, like, what, is Pig, what do Pig and Toad want as, as characters, and this is what they're trying to achieve. Um, and what is psychologically what's going on with Magpie that makes her do what she does and then be, become obsessed with Batman in the way that she does, and why has Anarchy come to Gotham City to challenge Batman, those kind of things. So all of them, you know, we approached everything from that aspect of how is you know how is this going to affect Batman? What is going on with him emotionally right now, and how do the villains that he's dealing with reflect that? It, it's true to what's iconically Batman. It's true to what the characters are, and I, I think that we've been trying to do that with some of these newer villains too. We're trying to bring out aspects of Batman, and we're trying to um, bring different stories than what you've seen before. You mentioned Professor Pig and mm-hmm. Magpie. Are there any other villains that you can tell us about? Anarchy. Anarchy, yeah. If you know, I mean, there's an anarchy in the comic books. Although we've we've rejiggered him, he's we we always refer to him now in the series as he's kind of the Moriarty to to Batman's uh, Sherlock Holmes. Or um, we've kind of said that you know, Batman's kind of the Black King in Anarchy, he's the making him the White King. Yeah. So it's sort of this psychological yes. chess game. And the way, it, yeah, and the way, like like a Moriarty, the way he approaches any di- any dealing with Batman is it's never the direct line. It's always there's a ma- there's machinations going on in the background. Um, what other characters? Can we use? Cipher, which is probably a character you guys don't aren't that familiar with. He's way back in the in the Humpty Dumpty. In the, Humpty Dumpty. Hey. Which you know was the Arkham he was in Arkham Asylum and, and those. Although we've we've given him a we've sort of one of the nice things is DC is like hey you know we're just happy that you guys are taking these characters and, and really giving them a showcase. And so if you would need to change them, you know just let us know what you're going to do. And as long as we're cool with it, you can do it. I mean, but but it's funny because I don't think <clears throat> I think people forget we did the exact same thing on Batman the Animated. We took <laughs> we took several versions of the character and we kind of distilled it down. And now I think people are so used to it, but at the time, people weren't real happy with some of the takes that we we did with, like, say, Two Face. Two Face, I think, before that was not black and white. You know, it was always the weird patterns and things like that. So um, we're just trying to do the same thing. We're trying to take these characters and then distill them down into something very iconic yeah. and very clearly Batman, very pure Batman. Yeah, I mean, like, Pig and Toad is a perfect example because. You know they're, they're they're awesome characters in the Grant Morrison books, but part of it is we can't do a character that runs around, you know, <laughs> killing people and to putting their, burning their faces off and turning them into you know zombies and stuff like that. So, you know, we we altered 
we they they look he looks similar to what he looked to way in the comic book, although the design that Glenn did is awesome. And uh, but we made them much more like who are the villains from the 007 thing that I mentioned, Mr. Kid. Kid. Mr. Witt and Mr. Kidd, if you remember from, I think, Diamonds Are Forever, those two assassins who always, they kind of like hold hands and they go around. But they're very, so, like, Holmes and Watson. Yeah. They're very, um... Yeah, we have Udo... Wind Kidd. in the Willows. Wind in the Willows is the other word. We like a twisted, messed up Wind in the Willows characters, because they, you know, it's a pig and it's a toad, and they're in a little steampunk car, and they're driving yeah. around, they use a blunderbuss and everything, they got, they got a cannon <laughs> that comes out of the thing, and, uh, and, you know, Pig is a very refined British man, and and Toad is played by a guy named Udo Kier, so he's kind of this kind of crazy German accent coming out of him. So they're they're awesome. They're they're uh, the Sam Rage who runs the studios. They're our favorite characters. Loves them because they're just fun.